All right, welcome to another color grading tutorial, and today we're going to be doing a little bit, I guess, alternative workflow from my classical tutorials. So, we're going to be using an awesome program called 3D LUT Creator today in combination with DaVinci Resolve. And basically, what I have over here is my model Anissa that I've shot a couple days ago. I've shot some footage with the Sony RX100 Mark V. And basically, what I'm going to be showing you guys is how to take that footage, bring it to DaVinci Resolve, and later we're going to create our own custom LUT. That way we can work it out later, and basically it's going to be a completely new pipeline for, for the tutorial. It's going to be something that we haven't done before. If you're going to look at this screen, which is the bigger screen, uh, we have the footage of me basically goofing around. Let me turn off the sound. Um, you know, she's sitting on a chair. Very awesome. Very vivid colors. Very nice. Very green. Very bright. And I want to, first thing before I'm going to start color grading, I want to create the LUT. This LUT would basically going to be guiding our colors for future reference. So how I'm going to do this? Okay, so I'm going to right click and I'm going to grab the still. Okay, so I'm grabbing the still and then I'm going to export that still and bring it back into 3D LUT Creator where I'm going to do a little bit of color arrangements and we're going to continue from there. Okay, so I opened this picture in the 3D LUT Creator. And it's the same picture what I exported from DaVinci Resolve, as you can tell. And basically, I'm going to be working completely from scratch to sort of give it a little bit of kind of Rec. 709 look. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do this right now. So, uh, this picture is not too saturated. So the first thing I want to do is probably just a little bit at saturation. Because, you know, it was a fashion photo shoot. I want to make sure that the colors are bright and vivid. Um, okay, so like that looks pretty good. We, we can see that it's a little bit too much red, which we can actually fix it in the curves if we're going to go to um, saturation versus saturation. And if I'm going to bring it down, we can see that the most saturated color is only being affected by what I'm doing. So, like that looks pretty cool. Let's go back to AB and I'm gonna click over here on this little pentagon. And basically, now we have a general color. So, before I'm gonna start doing anything, I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast. Okay, just like that. Let's see, a little bit more perhaps. Okay, uh, maybe a little bit more. So, I'm gonna go back in the curves and I'm going to do saturation versus saturation. So let me do a little bit of point here. And I'm going to start cranking it very slightly gently, just like that. And let's check out what's going to happen if I'm going to start cranking the bottom of it. So overall saturation kind of goes up. Meanwhile, we retaining the same saturation of her red swimwear, which is great. That's pretty much what I want to do. I think I increased a little bit too much for my taste, so I'm going to keep it like that. And now we're going to go again to A and B. And let's see what we can do. Well, I have a lot of colors over here, but some of the colors I can play around with. Like, for example, the blue. <clears throat> let's see. The blue over here is very desaturated, and this is our point somewhere right over here. So if I'm going to click here, and I'm going to start stretching it all the way back, we can see that I'm adding more color into the blue. So I kind of like that. It looks pretty cool. Looks very cinematic. <clears throat> so anything else I want to do? Let's see what I can do with the water. So the water is somewhere around over here. And if I'm going to start stretching this part, we can see that it adds saturation to water. So for now, I'm very happy with this. Um, I'm not going to be going too much more into details. I'm going to cover this in the next tutorial. Right now, I'm showing the perspective of somebody who, let's say, just got the program and have no idea what to do. So I'm sort of, you know, with you guys on that train. Anyways, 
So that's all looks great. And right now I'm going to click save 3D LUT and we're going to open that LUT in DaVinci Resolve and we're going to continue work there. Okay, we're back into DaVinci Resolve and now I'm going to apply that LUT that I just created. That way we can start working and developing more stuff. So let's create another node. Right click and da -da 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 -da. let's find new, new, new 3D LUT creator. Okay, that's how I named it. Let's click on it. Boom, and this is exactly how it looked in the 3D LUT creator. So basically, half of my job is technically done because that's how I want it to look. But again, for the sake of tutorial, I try to do that, you know, I'm trying to come off as uh, somebody who doesn't really know exactly what to do. Uh, I haven't prepared any of the material. It's pretty much, you know, on the spot, <clears throat> not polished. And now, that we have the LUT going, let me rename this and call LUT, I can basically start continue color grading, that way we can develop further look. So, okay, I'm gonna create a new node and I'm gonna con uh, convert it into a parallel mixer. And first of all, I wanna reduce a little bit of saturation. I think saturation a little bit too much. So what I'm gonna do, sort of even out a little bit, I'm gonna use color boost to reduce the saturation. So with the color boost, I'm just gonna crank it down very slightly. So let's check out before and after. Okay, I like that. So let me call this saturation. Okay, next I'm gonna be playing around with exposure. So my exposure looks pretty good to begin with. There's a few hot spots, and how I monitor the exposure is I'm using the plugin by Time and Pixels called False Colors. And I have the separate monitor over here in the corner, like I mentioned in my previous tutorial. And basically, it shows me the exposure, what is going on visually, rather than looking at the crazy waveform that a lot of people really cannot read. <clears throat> so, let's see what's going on here. In general, this is pretty bright picture, so we kind of in the upper mid-tones you know i'm pretty satisfied how everything looks however for my taste i may drop it just a little bit down that way we get a little bit more cinematic look so i'm gonna delete this and i'm gonna call this one exposure okay and here i'm just going to drop it down very slightly and maybe bring a little bit of shadows Okay, and I'm going to introduce a little bit more contrast, just like that. So let's check it out really quick with what we've done before and after, before and after. Really big difference. Um, not too bad, actually, how it looks for, you know, RX100, considering that that camera is very small pocket camera that was not meant for any kind of cinematic stuff. Now let's do one more step okay i'm gonna add a little bit of warmth into overall look okay and i'm gonna sort of keep it just like this i don't want to do too much but also i don't want to do too little so let me dial it down by half it's just gonna be very very little bit that you can barely see okay so before and after before and after okay like that looks great. Another thing, I can possibly change the color of the skies. So I'm gonna do another node. And by the way, this one, okay, right here. I'm gonna call this one sky. Okay, and for the skies, I'm just gonna do a very rough gradient selection. Okay, let's see. So gradient selection just like this. And I'm going to go in the curves, saturate, uh, hue versus saturation. That's what I'm going to be using. And in the hue versus saturation, I'm just going to pick over here. And I can increase it a little bit, not too much. Because keep in mind, we're not working with, you know, red file or any kind of other footage like that. It's still highly compressed. <clears throat> okay, so... Like that doesn't look too bad. We can see a little bit of artifact kind of going on over here because of compression. 
which is not too bad with a very simple noise reduction we can completely get rid of it so not too bad in general uh, let's play it back a little bit and see what we have I think it's very nice and bright shot and I kind of probably just gonna keep it like this because I think it looks very cool okay very simple <clears throat> again Keep in mind that what we've shot was not meant to be for, for show. We wanted to do a little kind of film and then we kept shooting and we really forgot to continue doing a film about it. So this is just a couple shots that I'm using for the tutorial purpose. Nothing more than that. Alright, so let's check it out again. Before and after. Before and after. I really like how everything looks and probably as of right now for this particular look that would be it and in the following tutorials I'm going to show you and teach you how to do more stuff in the 3D LUT Creator and DaVinci Resolve. So thank you guys so much for watching, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon.